Well, there we go. We're doing pretty good. Give you a little bit closer look at these uh, mortar salva. This is the third harvest I got from the same little bush. Uh, it grows pretty fast. It's kind of wiry. It does grow into a tree, but most commonly it's going to look like a, sh a bush or a shrub. <sighs> uh, I think this one's about five, maybe five years old. Probably five, six, fifth year, sixth year. I have to remember to see how to count these. If you look at the, uh, let's go look at some of the basics here. And see up at the top, I still can't get up there to get that. I mean, but you can tell I, I gave it a good shot of trying to pull the berries off of it. But those red ones, they're not due yet. So what we'll do is we'll come back again and I'll try to get up in there. But yeah, see if it's too tall, I can't reach none of that. And uh, traditionally you would put something on the ground. As you can see, it's kind of wet here. And uh, you put something underneath of it or someplace underneath around here like a sheet or some kind of a big basket or something. You'd shake the tree, you know, with a, catch the limb or use a small shepherd's crook or even, you know, throw a little, you know, just a stick or a rope or something up there and shake the tree. But then you might not get your rope back. But that just depends on how you do it. But, uh, yeah, as you can tell back further, it's starting to actually have a, see how the leaves are shaped now? So this might be two different ones of the same family, but uh, as, we, as we discussed earlier, let's see. But these younger ones might not have hair on them at all anyway, because that's just kind of the way it is, the younger trees. But mulberries are, some species are known for having hair on the back of the leaf. So that's pretty much what we're looking at when it's all said and done. But yeah, as you can tell, these more look like uh, kind of like shrubs. So they, at first, you know, when they're young, they do look a, a little more like a bush or obnoxious little shrub. But they're well worth it, and uh, they grow pretty fast. I planted one, and uh, it's already bearing fruit. Of course, the season goes pretty quick. I've got other things to do. Just plant it somewhere you think it's going to be decent. And as you can tell, this is on a rock cliff or some concrete back there. And, you know, most places that you wouldn't think that would grow. So, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed our little and gals, Spartanettes. And I know I keep bringing that up, the Spartan thing, but uh, this was a pretty big deal in that area, and there was actually, I'm sure, battles over the land, and uh, gleaning, and harvesting rights, and uh, fertility, and things of that nature. Do I get my camera right, as usual? You know that good camera crew I got, paying them them big bucks, so but uh yeah i keep bringing that up I keep bringing the wine of sparta up for a reason because a lot of those a lot of those people in those cultures survival is I mean, nutrition and health that's a lifestyle i mean they especially for the men to bring you know you're bringing it home for the mama you know bringing that thing home to mama and mom you know <clears throat> Women weren't no slouches in Sparta either. They, you know, they had, they worked. <laughs> but uh, a lot of those cultures depended heavily upon agriculture and foresting. You know, the, the wealth of our kingdom. You know, our dominion comes from the forest and agriculture. And uh, we depend heavily upon that. And so when civilization, you know, those who worship civil, started to come into play in some of those areas, it wasn't received very well. Even if it wasn't in the name of, you know, good, God, you know, Christianity, whatever you want to, it had taken a new twist, and so the land had started to become destroyed, kind of like what we see today. When you hear people talk about civil engineering and civil rights and all that, that's pretty much going right back to the same thing. And uh, that's still not received well for people who heavily depend on, well, we'll just say, we live in the country. Country folks just don't like that. 
okay and uh there's reasons for that this stuff tastes good and uh i want to have some more <laughs> but uh with that check it out i know a lot of the movies and of things of those those eras you know revolts of the peasantry some of that stuff sounds just far-fetched to me and uh I think there's a lot of mistranslations because you have several languages trying to describe the same event. And if you're from those areas and you read their reports and witness accounts and historical context, I just think it's crap. Ain't no way. But uh, anyhow, I just want to let you know this guy. This stuff's important. This comes from the Morris Alba tree. And uh, check it out. It's good for food, beverages, hygiene products, medicine. Right? agriculture you know increasing the uh the planet's environmental foray and uh i'm glad we had this little discussion and you spent some time with me and i hope you learned something and if you did that's great if not maybe you already knew it and if you don't know anything about wild crafting foraging or gleaning or even cultivating your own small you know curtis which is a court a garden check it out and if you need some assistance or some help hey holler at me i'll bring you some seed stock i'll bring you some food and that's the other thing i want to talk to you about too is that don't throw this stuff away when you get in eating it take the seed stock somewhere that's open field someplace that looks like it might have a future and plant it don't destroy the seed stock by just you know throwing it in the trash you're destroying seed stock even if you think it might be gmo'd Nature will fix itself, okay? If you quit screwing with it, just let it go out there. The plants will weed it out, okay? It always happens. Nature has a tendency of weeding out the weak ones or the tampered with, okay? You can't destroy nature. It's just the way it is. You can try and make it hell on the rest of us, which is pretty much what I assume is going on, or it might just be blind stupidity. I think it's that one. And, uh... This isn't about making money. This is about freedom and nature and peace of mind and health and longevity and fertility for you and your family, whom I choose to call my relatives on planet Earth, okay? So with that, I'm Glenn Monroe, the Roman Gnome, and uh, thank you for hanging out with me this season for uh, the mulberry harvesting and gleaning. See, we're actually gleaning when we're in the city. If I was in, you know, some place where there wasn't a civilization, it would be wild crafting or foraging. But we're in the city, and uh, it's sparse here, so I call this gleaning. Gleaning means you're trying to take the seed stock from what's left and try to reintroduce this someplace else where it'll have a shot at growing. That's called a buffer zone for future generations, because when this runs out here, they're going to be coming looking for someplace else to go move to so they can get some food. But they don't understand it. They're importing their food almost 2,000, 3,000 miles away. And uh, they're going broke doing it, wasting all the resources. And what's really weird is there's some of the uh, best choice edibles right here in their own backyard. And they don't even know it. So anyhow, with that note, thanks for joining me again for the Morris Alba lesson. There's a few other things I'll post with this video. Uh, some identification stuff. I mean, it's pretty easy. I mean, you can't miss this. <laughs> I mean, that's that's an obvious signature of a, uh, hey, look at me, I'm a berry. But, uh, yeah, thank you for joining me, and I appreciate your, you know, comments and subscriptions and all that. It means a lot to me. And if you're in the area, I am in central Missouri. Uh, Smithton, North Smith Village. I don't live in Columbia. That's the city area for the college and the university. I don't live at a university. I'm not a student. I'm the teacher. We founded the college and the Missouri State Teachers Association, but nobody wants to uh, learn what we have to offer. They want to learn their own stuff. I don't, I seem struggling really bad. But uh, if you'd like to learn from a master, I mean, I don't really use a lot of books. 
You don't need a lot of books. What you need is the experience and the wisdom and the situation to present itself. See, that's the other thing. What are you going to do? Carry around 50 pounds of books? On botany? I use the references as a guide because you know where they got it from? My family that were here before me. And they just recorded what they wrote down. Kind of weird. That they didn't have books. They were just taking notes of what we were doing. We were the guinea pig. We just said, hmm, smells good. Gulp. But our pain is your game. And so with that, one more time, thanks for joining me this spring. Excuse me, now it's June. As of tomorrow. According to all you Gregorian calendar people. And uh, more salva. The mole, common, we call it the mulberry. Makes good food, beverages, hygiene products, wine. I'm going to just... I'm just going to eat them just the way they are right off the tree. But if you have suffered from diseases and stuff, food and beverages is the number one reason why a lot of folks are, are ill. They're not eating correctly. They're not utilizing. They're not having allowed access to fresh nutritional uh, sources. This has a lot of uh, health benefits, especially if you get it in bulk, kind of like this, like I'm doing, and just eat, you know, two three times a day for a couple days straight some small amounts it has a protein and enzyme in it and uh, sugars friendly sugars not like sugar cane and all this is a different kind of sugar and uh, especially if you have problems health wise and I really mean that because otherwise I wouldn't be out here doing that I've been a victim of civilization being held hostage for long term and suppressed and forced to starve to death in a seg cell for two years and I, I got scurvy and started hallucinating and I lost all my hair and uh, my fingernails and my toenails and my teeth were starting to fall out but my toenails and fingernails fell out and my teeth fell were starting to fall out but after I was released after two years of going to jury trial and uh, for a driving infraction really but uh, I tried to do it legitimately, the way the Constitution talks about, you know, encourages us to uh, due process. I tried to do it that way. It was two years. They milked me, you know, just on purpose. Just to, oh, he wants to go by the rules, then we're going to make him pay. So that's what they did, and it almost killed me. And uh, so it's really important if you get in a jam. Haha, I guess that's a berry joke. Like that. Be prepared for it if it happens, because it will. Because they don't like you. They don't like this. This represents health, wisdom, and wealth, fertility, and happiness. Some people out there just don't like that. It's foreign to them. They're from places that have no fruit trees. They're from a desert or a city where there's nothing to eat. They're around. Check them out. In fact, don't go there. Just walk around like I do. But anyhow, take that with a grain, you know, or two of uh, herbs, and... Uh, I don't encourage anybody to go to the city, I think, unless you're there to save somebody, but be aware if you're there to help somebody out of a bad situation, you could be the next victim. And uh, so with that, i just letting you know, be cautious and uh, take a witness with you everywhere you go. Don't go by yourself. Use the buddy system. Take your cousin with you. Do it like the Mormons do. <laughs> go in pairs. Okay? Don't do like I do or you'll get jumped and beat up and have to learn how to fight on your own and be a warrior. And then they'll think you're a crazy guy. So anyhow, take it easy. Happy harvesting. Don't get blown away by Mr. Twister and uh, his sister. Later. Ugh.